Welcome everybody to my 1.15 Lightmatica tutorial video. Now guys, in this tutorial we're going to be going over how to install Lightmatica and also some of the essential features this mod has to offer. So let's just jump into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to need to get this mod working is fabric. So right under installation we're just going to click here. If you're using MultiMC use that, if you're using vanilla then go over here, make sure you're on the latest install version, and then go ahead and just download that. We're also going to use Optifine with this, so go to the Optifine website, go to Downloads, uh, go over to Preview Versions. So as of recording this video, Optifine 1.15 isn't really out yet, but uh, we have Preview Versions, so just go ahead and just download that. We're also going to need Optifabric, so on the Optifabric page, go to Files. This isn't the actual one we want because it says 1.14. We want 1.15, baby! So just scroll down a bit, it says 1.15, download that one. We also need Malalib, so again, go to Files. This top one says 1.14, we don't want that, we want 1.15, so download that one. And then finally, Lightmatica. So again, files, the latest version of Lightmatica is already at the top, so just download that. Alright, so these are all the files we've downloaded. Go ahead and run your fabric installer. So pretty much you just click on install. I've already done it, so I'm not going to press install again. Alright, so boot up your Minecraft, make sure fabric loader 1.15 is selected, and then make sure you run the game once. You need to run the game once. And then once you've done that, go ahead, click your start menu, type in percent app data percent, click on uh, roaming, click on dot minecraft, go to your mods folder, and then copy the other four files we've downloaded and just put them in your mods folder. Just put them in there. And then you uh, should be good to go. Alright boys, so once we got all of our mods in, once our game starts up nicely, we just gotta go into Options, Video Settings, and Performance, and we need to make sure that Render Regions and Fast Render are both off. And unfortunately, shaders uh, don't really work well with this mod, so make sure they're disabled. And afterwards, we're pretty much just good to go, guys. So we have this structure here, I built this when I was like 15, I have no idea what the frick I was thinking. But we need to make just a basic selection here. So the way the selection works is that you just need a stick, and this works in survival mode too by the way, but you just get a stick. You can see down in the uh, bottom left corner of our screen we have uh, different modes. So the first mode, area selection, uh, to change modes you hold down the control key on your keyboard and use the scroll mouse wheel. So we have area selection, schematic placement, and a whole bunch of other quirky options. I'll get into the rest of the options later, but for now, make sure you're set to area selection mode. Press the M key on your keyboard, that'll bring up sort of like the main Lightmatic menu. And what we want to go to first is the area selection browser, so click that. Uh, click on new selection, we're just going to name this Cringe, just like my channel. You're going to want to make sure this is selected, so by default it is selected, so... And alternatively, another way to get to that menu is to hold down M and then press S. So that brings up that same menu we saw before. And guys, we have this cube here. So this is sort of like our selection cube. Uh, what we want to do is hold down the Alt key on our keyboards and then use the scroll wheel. And then that sort of brings out the selection in one direction. We can also do it that way. We can go down. You just have to look at where you want to move the selection. Hold down Alt, use scroll wheel, and it just goes. Now this version of Lightmatica is a little bit fricky. Um, normally there's supposed to be like a red cube here. Uh, it's kind of rendering it in, but not really. So that red cube sort of signifies the direction in which the selection goes when you're holding down when you're doing it. So as you can see the selection only goes downwards, but if we go upwards the selection kinda like shrinks on us. So say we don't want that to happen, right? Well you have to go into the opposite corner and middle click it. So as you can see now this blue box is selected. And if you want to go back to that red box just middle click it again. But yeah with our middle box selected we can just bring her up, oh yeah, and then we can also go in more directions than was previously possible. 
Another thing you can do is uh, just use the buttons on your mouse. So, so if you left click, that selects the, uh, the red box. If you right click, that brings over the uh, blue box. So using your left and right click, you can sort of place the box without using any alt scroll wheel nonsense. So another cool trick with the uh, selection tool is if you go ahead, go back into that same menu, M and S, go over to configure, and then you can change the corner mode to expand. Now what this does, if we, uh, if we right click and then left click, it sort of just kind of expands it. So you can do that in all directions, essentially. Another thing we can do is uh, if we go back into our area selection manager, click on configure, go over here, click on configure again, and then you can uh, deliberately pick a corner if you're having trouble finding it. And you can also move a corner to the player. And then we fly up on the opposite corner, go into the same thing, corner two, select, make sure it's selected, and then move to player, and bam! There you go. Now now that's a simpler way of selecting maybe for some people in some instances. Another thing you can do, real quick, one more selection thing. If we hold down M and then press A, we can make another selection. So we can just make a whole other selection and save it inside of one file. All right, boys, so say we want to save this selection. All we got to do is press M, go into Area Editor, click on Save Schematic and then click on Save Schematic. Wow. One cool thing about Lightmatica is that everything you place into the world, so selections or maybe like a schematic you've placed in the world, will stay there when you leave and then rejoin. So I really like that feature. But yeah, say we want to get rid of these icky, ugly selection boxes. Well, we got to press M, go into Area Editor, make sure you click on it to select it, and then press the minus, do the same with this, and now it's the selection is completely gone. So say we want to place the schematic in another world, well, let's do that. All right, well, this is a completely new world. Uh, if we want to paste our schematic in, we just press M, go to load schematics. I'm gonna go with cringe two because we had two selection boxes in that one. Click on load schematic and then it should load in. Now my schematic will look a little bit different than your schematic, so let me just sh show the default view real quick. So normally schematics load in looking like this with the with the blue grid lines and the uh, it, it looks it looks like solid basically. And so to change those settings, we go and press M, configuration menu, hotkeys, and where it says toggle overlay outline rendering, you just uh, click this, set it to a key on your keyboard, I just have it set to my numpad one. Alternatively, you can just type with your keyboard, so toggle overlay outline rendering. There we go, it just shows up here. So what that'll do, if you press the key you assigned, um, it says toggled schematic outlines off, but as you can see, nothing really changed. So to fix that, we just hold down the M key, press R, so MR, that completely toggles off the rendering of your thing, and then press M and R again, and then bam, those those blue little grid lines are still kind of there, but they're a lot less noticeable than they were before. And then another setting I use is uh, if we go back to hotkeys, find toggle translucent rendering, and then set that to uh, whatever you want. And so when I press that button, everything basically becomes translucent. You can see through blocks, and then this makes building a lot easier in some circumstances. So in order to move this selection, guys, uh, just go back to our stick, hold down control, and then go to schematic placement. And then we move this the same way as we move the selections. So just hold down alt and then scroll wheel. So say I want to put this like in the ground. But before we paste it in, guys, there's a couple more settings we need to adjust. So go back into our configuration menu, go back to generic, and then change paste replace behavior to all. By default, I think it's on none. So basically, if, if we were to paste it in now, uh, the grass would just completely cover up this whole section. So all of this would not be pasted in. So make sure that's set to all. And then where you see uh, pick blockable slots, just add uh, comma six, comma seven, comma eight, comma nine. 
just have all of those pick blockable slots, boy. Another really important feature that I use when building in survival is uh, the layers option. So if you hold down M and then press uh, page up or page down on your keyboard, you can see we can change the render mode to single layer, layer range all below or all above. So we'll set that to single layer. And then all we have to do now is press the page up and page down buttons on your keyboard. And that renders each individual layer. So this is really, really helpful when building in survival. Another command that's really useful to have is schematic rebuild break place all. Set this to just any kind of key on your keyboard. And so this is really useful when you don't want a certain type of block uh, in your schematic. So say I just want to get rid of all of this stone. You make sure the mode is set to rebuild schematic. You hold down the assign button, then you left click with your mouse. So that will just get rid of all of the stone in this schematic. So say I want to get rid of all this grass, hold down that button you assigned and then left click. All that grass is gone. So say you want to paste this in the creative server and uh, you have allow cheats set to on or your opt or whatever. You just make sure you're in the paste schematic in world mode and we need to assign the hotkey. The execute operation hotkey needs to be set to something. So press that execute operation hotkey Okay, well, as you can see, we got the message, uh, the schematic goes outside of the world bounds, so we just got to move it up a bit. All right, so again, make sure you're in the paste schematic in world mode, and press that execute operation key. You might crash or you might lag, depending on how big the uh, schematic file is. Oh, okay, this is interesting. Uh, because this stone was outside of the world bounds, it actually did not get deleted when we went to the rebuild schematic mode. So that's interesting. All right, so just a couple more features to go through. If we hold down M and then press L, we can see we have a materials list of everything that's in the schematic. So one more feature that you can do is uh, if you're missing a block in the schematic, hold down M and then press V. And then we have our uh, schematic verifier menu. So click on start verification. As you can see, the block we broke, it detects it. Uh, if we select it, then we can actually see where that missing block was. So we place that block back, and uh, now there is no more verification. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, if you want to rotate or mirror the schematic, all you have to do is press the minus key on your numpad, or alternatively, you can press M, go to schematic placements, uh, make sure this is selected, click on configure, and then we have a whole bunch of other options here. So we have a rotation option, press that, that obviously, you know, rotates it. When you want to get rid of the schematic, press M, go into loaded schematics, and then press unload, and then boom. It's gone, just like my father when I was conceived. One more thing, guys, if you are uh, if you want to build a schematic inside of water, or I think inside of snow even, you can see if we try to lower this bad boy into the water, it looks completely scuffed. Like, how are you supposed to tell what block is what? The way you fix that is uh, you go into your config, go into visuals, scroll until you find the option render colliding schematic blocks, set that to true, and then also set schematic overlay type extra to false, and then that makes building underwater a whole heck of a lot easier. You can actually see what's going on. Another thing is that you can select uh, these blocks just by middle clicking them, so even if you're in survival, I got a bunch of stone in my inventory, if we middle click, boom, it selects the stone. Alright guys, well that's going to do it for this Lightmatica tutorial. Uh, I went over a bunch of the basic settings in this one, Maybe in the future I'll do one where I go over all of the advanced settings, but for now, these are the essential settings I use pretty much. So yeah guys, if you want to support Hugh Bone, then do that. Maybe be on the lookout for a more advanced tutorial. Oh!